And I know, like, autism people, they um, have different minds and things sometimes. Me, I do stuff people don't understand. And it's not mean that the person is evil. It means that they operate differently and they have a different mindset. And they're not, they, um, they have different functions in their brain, how they operate of being, having autism. And sometimes you're not going to understand the person that has autism because they act differently. They just a different set from a normal, a normal person with a normal mindset. But people with autism have a brain that it's working differently. Right? Like you all, you call something. This person is saying something like contract, contradictory to what the Bible says, and then you see it, and then you tell that person, "No, that's wrong, whatever," or you don't tell, you don't get to tell that person, but you um, you call that person by their name. And tell the um, and warn the people, the Christians, the flock, that this person is teaching like false doctrine. And people say, well, you shouldn't call people's name out, but the Bible says like, you're supposed to expose people, expose false doctrines, and the people that's teaching them. Because that's a loving thing to do. That's not bad. Like, and for the people that are saying against that, or they don't read the Bibles. Because there's people in the Bible that called the bad people out. Eli called Jezebel out. And Jesus called people out. Like, he called the priests out. And by their name, like, and called there's people in the Bible. John the Baptist, he called the um the guy, um, the Herod, the one that's having an affair with his brother's wife, he called him out like there was a biblical stuff to back that up. Um the people doing it in the Bible, so how are they saying that you're not supposed to do that when people did it in the Bible? If you really read the Bible, you'll see it in the Bible. Luke chapter 3 verse 19 but when John rebuked Herod the Tetrarch because of his marriage to Herodias his brother's wife and all all the evil things he has done John also publicly criticized Herod and Etepias I don't know how to say that name the ruler of Galilee for marrying Herodias his brother's wife and for many other wrongs he had done, you see, he also publicly, it says this, 
he publicly criticized Harry. So what are them people talking about? When Paul wrote to the Romans, he urged them to beware of false teachers in their midst. Are you reluctant to closely identify a pastor or administer as a false teacher? Are you hesitant to name well-known TV evangelists as a false prophet? Some go so far to refrain from mentioning such people publicly in any explain. God will take care of him if he wishes. I need not to identify them myself. Besides, I have enough thoughts of my own to be concerned about those of others. Where Second Peter says free, Second Peter chapter three, sixteen, seventeen says that uh, um. Be on your guard. So that you are not carried away by the error of unprincipled men and fall from your own steadfastness. If somebody was selling poison in the distribution of food to the customer, of the food, the customer must be warned. If someone were maliciously sharing poison in the distribution of food, the customer must be warned. Otherwise, many will be harmed or even killed. So isn't it spiritual warfare? Warfare of people far more vital than their physical welfare. Luke chapter 13, 32. This is where Jesus publicly condemns the writing more much of the time. Go and tell that fox. Go tell that fox. In this instance, our Lord not only called a cursing by name, but he called Herod a name, a fox. He didn't hide Herod's evil character, but publicly exposed it to others. Paul did too. We're supposed to lovingly tell that person that that person is not teaching what the Bible says and tell that person to do research and to line it up with the Bible or what the Bible says or what that person is teaching because it is false and tell them like what they're teaching is wrong tell them what they're teaching of their false teaching You explain the error, you give reasons for. Matthew 17, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but when really are ravenous wolves. Matthew chapter 7, verse 15. Acts chapter 20, verse 28, 29. Pay careful attention to yourself and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God, which he obtained with his own blood. 
I know that after my departure, fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing. Jesus said to them, watch and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Saudis. Matthew 16, verse 6. And to avoid them, you have to know who they are. You can't avoid somebody if you don't know who they are. This is the idea of identifying and avoiding. Shows up in First Corinthians. But now I'm writing to you not to associate with anyone who bears the name of brother if he is guilty of sexual immorality or greed or is he an adulterer, a robber, drunker, or swindler, and not even to eat with such one. So, and here are five factors perhaps to consider when deciding whether to name a false teacher publicly, the seriousness and deceitfulness of the era, and the size of the audience. Is it growing? The rotation of their ministry, do they make one blunder or are they constantly doing it? The vulnerability of the people for whom you are responsible, and the role you have in influencing the shepherds, you really need to be discerning for the false teachers. When you do name a false teacher, it's best to do it where you do more than name drop. You explain the error and you give reasons for rejecting it. You can communicate complexities and you set a tone of longing for truth and love. You're not just singling mud. Matthew chapter 12, 33. When you're looking for fruit, here are free to pick a test to apply to any teacher to determine the accuracy of his or her teaching. What does this teacher say about Jesus in Matthew 16, 15, 16? Jesus asked, who do, they, who do you say I am? Peter answers, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Before the answer, Peter is called blessed. John chapter, second John chapter 9, everyone who goes ahead and does not abide in the teaching of Christ does not have God. Whoever abides in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. The, the teacher preached the gospel. The gospel is the final, the good news, concerning Jesus' prayer and what he did on the cross and shed his blood for us. Death, prayer, and resurrection, according to the scriptures, First Corinthians, now I will remind you, brothers of the gospel, I preach to you what you receive and what you stand and by what you are being saved. If you hold fast to the word I preach to you, unless you believe in vain, for I delivered to you. Galatians chapter 1 7 If someone is not that there is one, uh, not that there is another gospel, but if there are someone who is trouble, some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Christ, they want to teach lies and false teachings and other stuff beyond what the Bible says.
And one of the things I'd like to say is, as nice as the ASEAN's, the statements, God loves you, God wants us to feed the hungry, and God wants you to be wealthy, are not complete message of the gospel. As Paul warns in Galatians 1, seven, at least some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. And let that person be condemned. Galatians chapter 1, nine, as we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one you receive in this Bible, the Holy Bible, let him be a curse. Galatians, Second Peter one, and John. I mean, First John and Second John and Jude it is often difficult to spot a false teacher and false prophet. Second Corinthians eleven fourteen, and no wonder for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. And second Corinthians eleven fifteen. So it is no surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness and or correspond their deeds. People go sit down. And this is what, and this is the only reason why we was calling Brian Chujo out because he's like. So I see him like um, lining up with false teachers. Like he claims to like speak the truth and be in biblical truth and be about truth, but he's letting himself um, align with false teachers, as Isaiah Salvador and all them that teach that Christians can be possessed by demons and lining up with new agers and stuff like that like if you're gonna be about something about truly about god you can't be lining up with um false teachers and clicking clickbaiting them clicking baiting them with them because you're sharing in their false doctrine as much as they are that's what the bible says i agree you're supposed to like try to like, confront them to the truth but I don't agree with like lining up with them and stuff like that. Because that's not what the Bible says. And that's all the reason why we was calling him out. We wasn't even trying to pick on him or nothing like that. People who call out false teachers are not divisive. People who embrace false teachers are divisive and can be deadly.
And sometimes um, Brian Trejo makes it like in his music, he'll be like, you have to stop this to receive Jesus. Like, it seems like a works salvation sometimes or in his music a works be salvation where you say oh you tell the person well you gotta stop doing this to receive jesus and what the bible says that's a work be salvation because if i gotta stop doing something to receive jesus that's crazy i know we're supposed to repent and stuff like that but you can't tell people to stop doing this stop doing that to receive jesus then you will work out you're working like a workspace salvation Salvation is by Christ alone. Putting your faith in him alone. Apart from anything. Repentance is a more change of mind about who Jesus is. And what he has done for you and about sin and at least to a turning away from sin that change of mind that you will have will lead to a change of action as a repentant heart does not want to live a wicked life anymore it has new desires and it goes in a different direction and it turns from sin If someone says to you, you have to stop sinning to be saved, that is a salvation by works, which of course is of the devil. Jesus bore all our sins on the cross. Colossians 2, 14, having canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness, who stood against us and condemned us, he has taken it away, knowing it to the cross. so hot I don't know man And I know that um, Christians cannot be possessed by demons because true Christians have the Holy Spirit inside of them. And to say Christians could be possessed by demons is such false doctrine and blasphemy. Because basically they're trying to say like demons can dwell and where their Holy Spirit can dwell at the same thing at the same time. And that's definitely a lie. Demons can't even stand being around Jesus. They can't stand his presence, his Holy Spirit, or none of that. They hate him to the tents. That's why they're always trying to attack Christians and always have something against Christians. 
because they hate him of who he said who he is. So they will never dwell where he is. said you can't come to Jesus on your own because John 16 44 says no one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws him So it says, for, for all people have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All people are evil. Brian Trujillo, you're evil still. You mess up and make mistakes and sin. Right? You're not that perfect guy just because you're like so out there and stuff. And you're talking about being popular. Like, maybe you do got a little pride in you. Like, because it's not even about him. It's about Christ. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans chapter 6 verse 23. Jesus came to earth to live a perfect life and die and was resurrected to pay the penalty for our sins. But God shows his love for us and while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans chapter 5 verse 8.
Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, Brady, Come to me, all you who are worthy and burdened, and I will give you rest, and take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The thing I love most of all these like to say too, just because you mention her name or somebody that's like that has a lot of followers or whoever, they like to say like, Well, you're mentioning my name, trying to get your views up. Why do they keep saying that stuff like they think everybody's out to get their followers or something? Just because I mentioned your name and I call someone out about you doesn't mean I'm trying to get my my um famous off your name. I'm just trying to put it straight to you, the truth. And you're up there twisting it, saying I'm trying to come up off your name. No, that's not the case. And you're like you're in like jeopardy for saying like false things like that you're a hobby hold accountable for that because that wasn't true that was never the case you don't even know that like you're just saying that because that's what you think and maybe it's the other way around like they think they're gonna lose their followers because they're so prideful and they can say that kind of stuff It's crazy. So crazy. So it says um, Jude again. I'll probably read Jude in my, um, my live. So because I want to not do as long because I'm video recording. Thirteen oh one. Talking to people about Jesus is a example, and um.
Mm -mm -mm. I hope that was it. Oh, okay. Mm Philippines chapter 2 and verse 11 is good. Have the attitude of Christ. Is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ? Any comfort from his love? Any fellowship together in the spirit? Are your hearts tender and compassionate? Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another, and working together with one mind and purpose. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble thinking of others as better than yourself and don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of equally with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges and he took the humble portion of a slave and was born as a human being. And when he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on the cross. Therefore, God related him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names. And that, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God, of, God, of the Father, God the Father. Here's a good one to Acts chapter 10. Um, verse 34. The Gentiles heard the good news, and Peter replied, I see very clearly that God shows no favorism. In every nation, he accepts those who fear him and do what is right. And this is the message of the good news for the people of Israel. And that there is peace with God through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after John began to preach in his message of baptism. And you know that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with the power. So Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. And we apostles are witnesses of all he did throughout Judea. And Jerusalem, and they put him to death by hanging him on a cross. But God raised him to life on the third day, and then God allowed him to appear, not to the general public, but to us, whom God had chosen in advance to be his witnesses. We were those who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead, and he ordered us to preach everywhere and to testify that Jesus is the one appointing by God to be the judge of all the living and the dead. He is the one 
all the prophets testified about, saying, Everyone who believes in him will have their sins forgiven through his name. I gotta go, guys. Yeah, as Philip Philip was telling this person about the meaning of stuff, um, Acts chapter eight, verse twenty six. As for the Philip, and the angel of the Lord said to him, "Go south down the desert road that runs from Jerusalem to Gaza." So he started out, and he met the treasure of. Eph Ethiopia, a Enoch of great authority under the Kenadak, the queen of Ethiopia. The Enoch had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and he was now returning, seated in his carriage. He was reading out loud from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Holy Spirit said to Philip, go over and walk along beside the carriage. Philip ran over and heard the man reading from the prophet Isaiah, and Philip asked, do you understand what you are reading? The man replied, How can I unless someone instructs me? And he urged Philip to come up unto the carriage and sit with him. The passage of scripture he had been reading was this. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb is silent before the shearers, and he did not open his mouth. He was humiliated. He was humiliated and received no justice. Who can speak of his descendants? for his life was taken from the earth. So Enoch asked Philip, tell me, was the prophet talking about himself or someone else? So the beginning of the same scripture, Philip told him the good news about Jesus. And as they rode along, they came to some water and Enoch said, look, there's some water. Why can't I be baptized? And he ordered the carriage to stop and they went down into the water and Philip baptized them. And when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. And the eagle out now saw him again, but went on his way rejoicing. And meanwhile, Philip found himself further north at the town of, I don't know that word, A-Z-O-T-U-S. He preached the good news there and in every town along the way until he came to Kassira, the C A E S. A R E A. So this is good. Some, this is a kids' Bible, by the way, but it's good for grown-ups too. So some kids at school, or even people, are people regardless, and even some teachers give Christians a pretty tough time and this makes me not want to let anyone know I'm a believer what should I do it says rejection comes with being a Christian because our lives and beliefs go against the flow of the rest of the world growing closer to God will naturally make you grow further away from the world read Acts chapter 7 54 60 Stephen took a stand for Christ that cost him much more than rejection from a few friends it cost him his life Read further in Acts chapter 8 and 9, you will see what the results of a fearless faith can be. And imagine being able to see all of the history from beginning to end. You would understand so much more because you could see the whole picture. But only God can do that. So we have to trust him. We have to live on the earth without being able to see the future. If Stephen had known what his death would accomplish, he would have died smiling. A man named Paul saw was one of the foremost persecutors of Christians. But Paul's life was turned around, and he became a follower of Christ. Paul had heard Stephen speak, and he had watched him die. Paul didn't just come a church-only poo-sitter type of follower. He traveled throughout the world, sharing the good news about Christ. He also wrote nearly half of the books of the New Testament. Stephen's rejection helped bring Paul to Christ. People are watching you and other Christians at school or in everywhere. They're watching you. And they are seeing how you respond to rejection and verbal abuse. And within those crowded halls are people who want to believe in something true, something worth living for, no matter what the cause. 
and when they find find it, they make an incredible impact in the world in their world for Christ. What do they learn from watching you?